today we're going to learn about the Nutrition Facts label. This label is required by the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA on most packaged foods and beverages and should be easy to find on the outside of the packaging. It's an important source of information about the nutrients in the food. Remember, nutrients are the substances you eat that provide nourishment essential for your growth and to keep you alive. Your body needs the right combination of nutrients to work properly, which is why it's important to check out the label to know what you're eating. Let's explore the Nutrition Facts label together. Here we see the full label. It will contain a lot of information, and once you learn how to read the label, you'll have a better understanding of what you're eating. The information is broken down into the Nutrition Facts and the Ingredients list. Let's look at the Nutrition Facts. Most nutrients are measured in grams, also written as G. You will find that your macronutrients are in grams. Those are the carbohydrates, the protein, and the fat that you eat. These are the nutrients that you'll need in larger amounts. Some nutrients are measured in milligrams, or mg. Milligrams are much smaller than grams. There are 1,000 milligrams in every gram. Even smaller than that are micrograms, or mcg. There are 1 million micrograms in one gram. There are a few things to look at when reading a nutrition facts label. First, let's look at the serving size. The nutrition label always lists a serving size, which is an amount of food the nutrition facts are based on. You might find measurements such as one cup or three ounces, or you might find it written in numbers like two cookies or eight crackers, like we do here. The serving size gives us a general idea of how much we should be eating, but it doesn't mean that that's how much you're actually eating. Think for a moment. If you were to have a snack of graham crackers, how many might you eat? Would it be four or eight or even more? The amount you are actually eating is called the portion size. So to recap, the portion size is the amount of food that you choose to eat for a meal or a snack, but the serving size is a measured amount of food or drink that the nutrition facts are based on. The next time you eat something with a nutrition facts label, like cereal or crackers, try taking your usual amount or portion and test to see how that compares to the serving size. You may find that you took a much larger amount than one serving size. The second important thing to look at is the number of servings per container. That simply means how many servings are contained in that package of food. If there are 14 servings in a box of crackers and each serving is eight crackers, you could serve about 14 people in your class one serving size. But if you give them an extra amount of crackers, say 16 crackers each, you could only serve about seven kids in the class. As you can see, there are some math uh, issues involved in reading food labels. <laughs> Remember to pay attention to the amount of food you eat because it might be bigger than the amount used to calculate the nutrition facts. The third item to look at is the number of calories in a single serving of food. This number tells you the amount of energy in the food. Here comes the math again. Since one serving of food contains the number of calories listed, in this case, 130 calories. If you are eating more than one serving or more than eight crackers, you have to multiply the number of servings you are eating by the calories per serving to get the total calories you are eating. For example, if instead of eight crackers, you chose to eat 16, you'll be eating two servings. You will multiply that by the calories per serving of that food or 130 calories Multiplying these will tell us that we're eating 260 calories. So what other information can we find on the label? On the left-hand side of the label, you'll find all the nutrients listed along with their amounts per serving. On the right-hand side, you'll find something called the percent daily value, which tells you the percent of that nutrient in one serving of this food. This number is based on someone eating 2,000 calories in a day. This is for an average adult, so it's not the same for everyone, but it's a good guide for people. If the label lists 4% for total fat, that means one serving of this food provides 4% of the total fat you need for that day 
if you are eating 2000 calories per day. In our list of nutrients, the first we see is total fat. The total fat is the number of grams of fat contained in one serving of the food. Fat is an important nutrient that your body uses for growth and development, but you don't want to eat too much. You will also find a breakdown of different types of fat to help you know what you are eating. These are saturated fats, trans fats, and the unsaturated fats called polyunsaturated and monounsaturated. For your health, you want to limit the saturated fats and avoid trans fats altogether. Unsaturated fats are good for us and can be found in fish and plant products. Try to make the most of your fats unsaturated. Adding up the grams of the different types of fats will give you the total fat. But wait, we see here that there's one gram of polyunsaturated fat and two grams of monounsaturated fat. So why is the total fat 3.5 grams. Well, that's because if products contain less than half a gram per serving of something, they don't have to list it. This means that there is either half a gram of trans fat or unsaturated fat per serving in this product. You really have to be a detective in reading these labels. We can also find information about how much cholesterol and sodium or salt are in a single serving of food. They are included on the label because some people should limit the amount of cholesterol and salt in their diets. Here we find how many grams of carbohydrates are in one serving of food. Carbohydrates are your body's primary source of energy. Since fiber and sugar are carbohydrates, you will also find these here. It's important to get a certain amount of fiber each day for your health, so a high number would be good. We want to limit the amount of sugar to keep our bodies healthy, so you'll want to keep an eye out for the grams of sugar in one serving. The Nutrition Facts label has changed recently to include the grams of added sugars that aren't found naturally in a product. Make sure you also keep this number low. This number tells how much protein you get from a single serving of the food. Along with carbohydrates and fat, protein gives us energy. Your body also needs protein to build and repair essential parts of the body, such as muscles, blood, and organs. There are many vitamins and minerals that your body needs to stay healthy and prevent disease, but the label only lists a very few important ones. On the label, you'll find the amount per serving of vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. These are listed because Americans do not always get the recommended amounts. The last thing to look at when reading the nutrition facts label is the list of ingredients in the food. This is where you can find if there are any ingredients you are trying to avoid or anything that you might be allergic to. The ingredients list shows what ingredients went in to make that food and are listed in order based on the amount of each included. So in this case, enriched flour is used in the greatest amount and it's followed in descending order by those in smaller amounts. When there is less than 2% of an ingredient, it will be listed separately. A long list of ingredients is going to be very processed, so you'll want to watch out for those. The eight most common allergy, allergens will be highlighted so that they can stand out. Here we see that the crackers contain wheat and soy, which some people may be allergic to and want to avoid. The ingredients list is an important part of the Nutrition Facts label. Remember to check out the Nutrition Facts label the next time you're eating.